Welcome everybody to another brand new video. So thanks so much, uh, the Escort video, all the lovely likes and comments and stuff like that, it really helped it and pushed it. Uh, and it got amazing views. I was mega chuffed with that, it was real good. So during that video, I made loads of mistakes like putting, it was a 1968 car all the way through it when actually it was a 1969 car. There was a couple of other doozies in there, which uh, yeah, I'll try not to do again. The other thing I didn't list like what I bought it for and all the parts and stuff like that, which I should have done, I ran out of time, but I'm gonna do that in this video as well. So speaking of costs, I spent pretty much everything I own, nearly 30,000 buying that car. Six days, made about 3,000 quid, which was, I was chuffed with that, to be honest. So I'm thinking, why not? Let's do the total opposite. Let's buy a lot of car for like as little as possible. Do the same again. Let's see how much money we can make. So let's have a look at the cars. So looking for a car, I've been searching through the usual eBay and Facebook marketplace, and I think I found one that, I mean, I like it. Sounds awesome, looks awesome, needs a bit of work. In the photos, it looks all right, to be honest. So hopefully a quick whip round and it'll be a lovely, well sellable car. So let's jump in the van. Let's go and have a look at it, shall we? So as you probably guessed by the thumbnail, the car we're gonna to see today is a 2006 Mark V Golf. It's just not any normal Golf. This one's an R32. So R32, what does it mean? Basically, it's got a V6, well, a VR6, six cylinder, 3.2 engine in it. It's four motion. That means it's four wheel drive. And also this one is a DSG. So it's got an automatic gearbox, well, I suppose it's not automatic. It's got a dual clutch gearbox, so they're awesome how they work. I think when you put it in sport mode, the gear change is something like 0.18 of a second. You can change gear. You can really bang them up the box. They sound awesome. Uh, the price of the car, the car is up for a thousand quid. Now a mint one of these cars goes for about eight grand. So it's up as a project that needs work doing. Um, we're scraping the bottom of the barrel list, trying to get the best car we can for the lowest money. So the guy, Andy, who we're going to see, he bought it in 2019, smoked it around for a bit. And then he said in early 2020, it developed a problem. So he took it off the road and that's where it's been sat in his garden, apparently. So hopefully it's not too bad of a problem. The car today is in Monmouth. It's not a million miles away from us. Uh, it's an hour's drive, so it should be good, but it's like a million back roads leading to it, which is a nightmare, especially in a massive truck. So I'll carry on driving and yeah, we'll have a look at the car. See you in a bit. So we've arrived at Andy's farm, or should I say mansion? Doesn't look like he's short of a few quid, if you know what I mean. It's sunny here in Monmouthshire, I think it's called. Uh, and a bit windy, so hopefully you'll be able to hear me. The car's just over there. Now, obviously the pictures in the listing was from a while ago because I wouldn't have even got in the truck and come here if I'd have seen the state of it. So, yeah, let me show you. I mean, the photos, it was on a driveway and you can clearly see this has been here a while because the edge has been cut and then they've stopped when they've got to this. Just have a look at that. I mean, he did get one thing right on the list and it is an R32. Yeah, and that was about it. It obviously has been off the road for what, the last four years now and just sat here being a very sad, sad little car. Now, something about this car it's a registered cat d on insurance the wind's picking up so he told me he bought it off the person that repaired it and it had rear quarter damage and a rear bumper now category d is like a minor repair before you know you get to c b and a that means the car's written off it's unrepairable but a d is a repair that didn't cost a great deal and it was kept on the road that's why it was bought as a track day car for him and 
whoever repaired it did a bit of a shocking job at the paintwork. But we got a, like a big blob of paint missing there. Coming down the sides, we've got scratches everywhere, really, to put it bluntly. All down the side, down the quarter. Let's go around the back. Whoop. And, oh, need to paint myself in the eye with a stick. It's got a Miltech exhaust on it. Nice. I mean, I bet that Miltech exhaust worth probably a couple hundred quid second hand if we ended up having to break the car. Now, why I say that is because he took it off the road because it had an engine rattle. Let's get the bonnet up. So, oh, that don't work. Let's find a, st a stick. Will that hold it up? Hopefully that's not going to fall on my head when I stick it under there. Oof, have a look at that. That is a proper Forge Motorsport induction kit. I'm sure that's proper carbon fibre as well. So that's got to be worth a few hundred quid as well if we end up breaking it. Now, why I say we end up breaking it, let's get down to the nitty gritty. The problem with this car is the engine. He said when he drove it, it was fine. Gears are okay, handled, handled perfect. Um, but when it got really warm, the engine started rattling. Now he said it was a really horrible rattle. He turned it straight off, let it cool down. And then he started up from cold. It was fine there until it got hot again. That's the outside, kind of looked at. Needs a massive wash, scratch to hell. Yeah, clearly been sat here a long time. Let's have a look at the inside. Yeah, I ain't even gonna get in there. That is minging. There's like, I don't know what that is. Oh, okay. oh the sunroof, the sunroof's even crying. There's water all up in the sunroof that is grim it's like it's like a luminous green and brown mold Ugh. what's that oh we've got a bag a bag in the back as well big nibbles out of it so there's been something living in here oh the smell that is yeah, I ain't even going to sit in there. So overall with the car, outside, not very good. Inside, disgusting. Possibly an engine problem. We can't start it. We can't drive it and check the gearbox. We can't check the brakes, but they'll be knackered anyway because they're proper rusty. All the tires are flat. Is it worth a grand? I suppose we'll get a few hundred quid for that exhaust and another few hundred for that air filter but let's face it, the rest is knackered. So he ain't short of a few bob. Let's go and be honest, tell him it's a POS, a piece of sh And yeah, we want to drop the price. Let's go and have a chat. I've just bought myself a Mark V R32. Mixed emotions about this one, uh, but I did go and just cut him in half and I bought this old car for 500 pounds that's a lot of car for that money and i can make it back if it's duff you know i put the battery booster on the window open so that's a good start all the brakes are stuck on though and i tried to get the you know tow eye out the boot it's carnage in there i opened the boot and a little field mouse jumped out so i hope <coughs> he hasn't ate me wiring loom for lunch to be honest this is going to be a big job Let's try and turn it round and get it done. That's some stuck brakes. So that's it, got the car back home in the workshop and you can see we've really got our work cut out for us. So up in the top corner here, that's where I'll be putting every bit of money we spend on this car and it'll all add up in the end. So I'll break this down into four bits again. 
We've got the drive, you know, the engine. We've got the handling, the inside, and then we've got our outside we're gonna do. First of all, we're still on day one. I wanna find out what this engine problem is so I can actually get some sleep tonight because otherwise I'm just gonna be thinking it's knackered. So let's get it on the ramp and let's get cracking. So I wanna run this engine up now and get this noise wherever it's coming from. Hopefully we won't start it up and it just explodes uh, because then we will be stripping it, crying a lot and yeah, just dragging it out the door and putting it in the garden. First thing I think we'll do is because, I mean, the engine's been sat for three years now, I expect the oil in it is like treacle. And if the engine's savable, I don't want to run it up and damage it any further. So on the way home, I got six litres of 540 synthetic and an oil filter from GSF, which cost this much, ready to put it in our engine. So let's get it up in the air drain this all out and have a look if it does look like treacle <laughs> let's go oh look what we got now i always say a good mechanic does not get any oil on his hands when he takes a sump plug out oh. Unless the sump plugs tight all the way out. There we go. Let's get the. I've got a clear tub just so we can see how black it is or if there's any bits in it. Ready? Three, two, one. Oh. Oh, I've got a bit on my hands. Ooh, looks like dark chocolate. No, we're not going to do that today. Right, let's get a new sump plug washer. Ugh. That is mega black. Got a new washer on. I'm just remembering that I got six litres from GSF of oil and I'm draining it into a five litre pot. So the panic hasn't come yet. Hopefully it's low on oil, which it's not stopping. So I'll cut for a sec and I'll go and get another pot. Put this in without making a mess. So I cut the video there because I promise I didn't panic. I didn't drop the sump plug into the waste oil. Uh, and then I definitely didn't panic, get up, kick the waste oil over and create a massive mess. What a nightmare, you can tell it's Monday, can't you? So, you know, you always got to remember, a good mechanic does not get any oil on his hands. That's right, you don't get it on your hands, just get it everywhere else. Right, I got the oil filter out as well. Um, pulled the paper element apart. Had a good look inside. There's no bits of engine in there, so fingers crossed we're still all good. You can tell it was starting to block up because the paper's starting to fold round. You can see it's starting to twist. What that is, is the pressure of the oil trying to be forced through that filter, and because it's starting to block up, it can't, and it, it basically starts to crush it. So we've got the nice, tidy new filter there, ready to go in. So what I'll do, I'll pop that in, fill it up the oil, and then we're ready to start it up. The moment of truth. So I put, how much is left in that? Half a litre, so five and a half litres. Also, I have put some new fuel in this because it was bone dry. I expect it's just evaporated the fuel. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous. Right, let's give it a go. Okay. It's going to rattle a little bit because the oil filter's empty, so it's got to fill that. Oh, the ignition lights are going on and off. <sighs> Come on. It's a bit lumpy. That sounds mint. Where's my torch?
we've got no fuel peeing out of it so obviously the mice didn't like the fuel pipes that's good tell you what if it stays like that we're golden right this is the moment of truth crank rattle give it a rev Something was weird then. That's not going to be the noise, that's just that's just loose or broke at the front. I'll tell you what, that sounds mint. Um, unless it was the oil, unless the oil was too thick and gone sludgy and it rattled when it was warm. Right, let's leave it ticking over for a bit. <laughs> Many hours later. Right, good news, we're now about half an hour later. It took a while and I had to turn it off quick because the alternator bout's about to fall off. Right, I'll, I'll start it up, have a listen to this, ready? Ooh, that is noise, Jesus. I can see what it is and I'm actually, yeah, Proper relieved to be a fair. Let's turn off this battery booster. Um, no wonder he stopped. That's an horrendous noise, isn't it? I'll get our problem off. I'll get it on the bench and I'll see you in a minute. Aircon pump. Have a look at that. So, oh, I can just turn it. It looks like it's got some damage here at the back. Uh, with the aircon gas, you've got oil in there, which lubricates all this. So I'm guessing when this cools down, as it is still quite hot, that's going to turn freely. So it heats up, heat seizes. I mean, you heard that bell. That was desperate, that noise. New there, 300 quid, 350 quid. I mean, genuine ones, probably about 900 quid. There's no way we're spending that kind of money on this car. It just won't be worth it. So. Hopefully now, end of day one, it's the time half six, so I'll go in, search the interweb, see if I can get one, if I can get one for 100 quid, that's all right, and then we'll continue with the car. So, fingers crossed, see you tomorrow. Welcome back everybody, day two, it's bright and early, and we're ready to get cracking with our R32 again. Uh, good news last night, the old eBay, buy it, sell it, love it, I found an aircon pump, which was good, and it's only £42.70, can't moan at that. This thing now, look at that, free as anything this morning, so it just shows you what temperature can do really, because, yeah, couldn't even turn that last night. Uh, it's next day delivery, so I expect they'll post it today, I'll get it tomorrow. I've ordered some other service bits as well for the engine to make it tippity top. Uh, so yeah, when that air con pumps comes, we'll carry on with that tomorrow. So today's jobs, handling mainly stuck brakes and tires. So I nipped out a GSF this morning. Let's have a look at what I bought. I've got myself a set of pads and discs all round. And also I've got some race quality dot four brake fluid. The only downside of all this is the price we've now gone up to that's right, 1,089 quid this car now owes us. So I'm hoping it's stuck pads and not a caliper that's knackered. So we'll start with the backs. Let's get stuck in. So checking the brakes, I went down the front, give it a spin, that's free. And so is the other side. And also the driver's side rear is nice and free. So it just leaves us with this one which is absolutely solid. So this is the one causing us a problem. Now, let me get the torch. Looking in here, see that arm there? That's the handbrake lever arm coming off the caliper. That should be resting down against this stop, which it's not. So it's basically like the handbrake's always on and that's why our brake seized. So let's get the caliper off. Let's get it in the voice. Start working the mus muscles, them things on it. And uh, yeah, let's see if we can free it off because I don't really want to buy one of those because they're going to be a couple hundred quid. 
And with the caliper off now, we can see much better that arm there and the little pin it should be sat on. I can even fit my finger there in between it, which is no good. I'm hoping it's just a crud build up, you know, a load of dirt and stuff behind that arm, just wedging it. So let's take this nut off and try and get this arm off. Oh, and there we go. Uh, yeah, it's just I thought, you can see like this kind of dust cover, that just saves dirt going in there, which it's kind of done at that job, but I don't know, it's a bit rusty and dirty, isn't it? Right, I'll get the old wire brush, I'll carefully go round this, just so I don't damage that rubber, and keep covering it in WD-40, and check back in a minute, see if I'm a happy boy or I'm crying because I need to buy a new caliper. See you in a minute. And there we go. Just have a look at that. All cleaned up. Everything's nice and free. I mean, looks like brand new, doesn't it? Oh, let me remove the label. That's right. I, I, I tried. I worked on it for well, nearly two hours. All inside that boot, that boot obviously does absolutely nothing. It was full of rusty water and corrosion and everything like that. And then when I peeled back the boot, the piston was seized. It was all full in there as well. So it was absolutely knackered. Needed a rebuild kit. It's just cheaper to get a recon one. So unfortunately that means, that's right, our price is going up. Don't want it to go up anymore. I got my tires yet and stuff like that. So let's carry on and get our brakes back together. So putting the brakes on is easy peasy. We're going to take off all those old, horrible, rusty brakes, put nice, clean new ones on. While we're there in the arches, hot soapy water, make them look mint. Same on the back, old brakes off, a nice, good clean, and a bit of paint. Jobs are good. And and then I'm sucking out the horrible brake fluid out the reservoir. If you have a look at that, that is grimy. I think the brake fluid's probably dirtier than what the oil was. It's proper done for. So reservoir's nice and empty. We're gonna put new fluid in there, just flush nice fluid through it and get that mint. Have a look at the state of this though. Inside I had to take the back center console out so I could de-adjust the handbrake cable and get it on our new caliper and I'm absolutely covered in this like green mold stuff. It's gross it is. So, I mean, it's getting late now, it's half four. I spent most of the day mucking around with that caliper and then getting a new one and cleaning stuff up. It's, it's not been a wasted day, but you know, we got, we got a lot done, but it just doesn't feel like I've ticked enough off my list, you know, we need to smash through this. But I'll bleed the brakes, call it a day, come in early, let's tackle that inside tomorrow because it's oh, it's just getting everywhere it's gross it is so i'll carry on and i'll see you in the morning welcome back everybody day three and we're going to crack on with our golf r32 so we're going to do the interior today i've been out i've bought loads of like bleach disinfectant carpet cleaners everything i can muster um and we're gonna try and tackle this car. We're gonna start off in the boot because I can't find the battery under the bonnet, so I'm hoping it's down next to the spare wheel or something like that in here. And the last time I opened this boot, a little mouse jumped out, so hopefully it's not gonna do it again. Let's look. Oh, just have a look at that. That is absolute carnage in there, isn't it? What a mess. It looks, actually, there's an empty bird feeder in there, I bet you. Yeah, there's remnants. That was full of seed. And yeah, let's hope that mouse has just eaten this and not wiring and bits of interior. Um, it's definitely a mouse. Looking at that, there's loads of little mouse turds floating around on that piece there. There's actually quite a few. There's a big pile of it in the corner. All this is just going to go in the bin. I ain't going to keep any of this. I ain't even going to touch it. I'm going to double up on the gloves, I think. Well, it's not going to clean itself with me just staring at it. Let's get stuck in. Start the time lapse. 
Right, we'll get our bin bag and start chucking all this stuff away. I'm going to keep the jack and give that a good clean. Then we get the hoover, let's suck up all them mouse turds, have a good go over everything and give it a nice rub down with some cleaner. After that, stripping the boot carpet out, it looks like the mice have just stayed on top of the carpet because nothing's chewed underneath. So once I stripped that down, I found the battery box, took the old battery out and put the new one in and then give it a good wipe round with some disinfectant, build it all back up and jobs are good. And Next, moving into the front, I'm going to take the seats out. Just need more room to do a better job of cleaning this car because it's so bad. And while the seats are out and I can get all round them nice and easy, I'm going to give them a good old clean. So hoover all the little bits out of all the seams and then I've bought some all surface cleaner. It's like a bleach, apparently kills 99.9% .9 of bacteria. It's got its work cut out on this car, I think. Then moving into the car, we're going to work from the top down. First thing up is that roof lining. It's awful to look at, full of white and green blobs, but a good old scrub gets that nice and clean. While I'm there, I'm going to go down to the seat belts and do all around the rear seats and everything like that. Then we've got to tackle our dashboard. It's covered in the white and green blobs again. There's a bit of brown mixed in there too. So the cleaner gets to work all over the top of that dash, going across to that horrible steering wheel. I'm trying to get in everywhere and get it all out. And then the last thing to do is give our carpet a good old hoover and a clean. So get them old mats out, hoover it up. It looks all right, to be honest. No holes in it or gum and blobs of dirt. So yeah, both sides come up nice and clean and then get them seats back in the car and then jobs are good and it's like a different car in here apart from the smell because it smells like a hospital kind of like thick disinfectant i think before i sell the car i've got some auto finesse interior cleaner i'll go around it with that and get a couple of magic trees in here i think to make it smell a bit better but yeah the, the dash Everything's come up well. There's no like big gouges in it. There's no scratches. It was just the fact that it was covered in mold and horrible stuff. But uh, yeah, we've been lucky with this interior. It looks good. While I was cleaning it, I had a little ding on my phone. We've had a special delivery. Let's go and have a look what's arrived. Always feels like Christmas when you get a big delivery. Lovely jubbly. We've got our second hand air con pump, which turns quite freely actually, which is good. So let's fit that on the car and then hopefully that's our engine problem sorted. Also other bits that have arrived. Ooh, get that off. A new gas strut, which clips on like so. That means we can get rid of our genuine piece of wood. And I've got six new spark plugs and a new pollen filter because I expect the old one is mega green being inside. Also I've bought on the DSG box, it actually has an oil filter. It's recommended to change every 40,000, but because we're gonna be driving this quite lively or the future owner might be, probably every 20,000 you want to be doing it. Comes with six litres of oil. It's about 5.7 litres, I think it is. And there's our oil filter. If you look down here, you can see that it's nicely placed, easy to get to. You just pop that cover off and there's the old oil filter. Put the new one in and then the cover back on. And then all that's left to do is fill it up. And then coming around the back of the car, spent yet more money this is all adding up this is got a service kit for the Haldex rear diff it's just under a liter of oil it's got another oil filter that's quite a few we've got on these this car easy to do as a drain plug a fill plug the filter just screws in the side and then you have to fill it up with a ginormous syringe because uh, the fill plugs around the side it's a right nightmare to get to and then let's go and have a look at the last thing i've spent most of my money on. <laughs> We've taken delivery 
have a nice set of tyres. I ordered these from Demon Tweaks, Toyo Proxy TR1s. They're good in the wet, good in the dry. Just a good all-round tyre for somebody to use on a track day or just smash it around the roads a bit. Ideal. The only problem is these were 310 quid, nearly. And that takes our total up to 1741 quid. Oof. Are we going to make a profit? You know, hopefully as long as nothing else goes wrong. Uh, problem with buying a cheap, you know, a lot of car for cheap is you've got a lot of parts to put right or, a, you know, a lot of car takes a lot of service in and a lot of cost as we've found out so far. Uh, I'm not going to fit these today. What's the time? It's four o'clock, so I'm going to bang the old wheels back on. Now it runs, so I'm going to get outside, give it a good old wash ready for our tomorrow's job which is tackling the outside hopefully we can polish the car up a bit make it look a bit better save some money fingers crossed anyway i'll see you tomorrow welcome back everybody day four of working on our golf r32 and unfortunately it's going to start on a bit of a sour note uh, after what happened last night so i did all the service work Mechanically, our car is perfect. The interior is nice and clean. So I was going to wash it, dropped it down on the wheels, and as I pulled this chock out, the skirt came away. And I put my foot behind it, gave it a push, and just have a look at that. That's proper rotten. Now, on day one, while it was running up to get that noise, while it was in the air, I did go all round it and check for corrosion. You know, it's the first thing you do if you're going to spend a lot of money on a car. Um, and I couldn't see any. It just shows you what can be hidden on a car. You know, couldn't even see that. It's been window bonded both sides and that's what's hiding inside it. Um, seal's cheap, 120 quid, but the problem is it comes up here and it goes across because all this is rotten. It just means it's going to need painting. Now, if we paint this one quarter, the rest is going to look awful. So we're going to end up having to paint the whole car. I rung my mate last night and he reckons 3,000 quid. It's just too much. It, it's, it's way too much for what we got. Um, I don't know what to do. We could black it, stick some bucket seats in it in a cage and go and have some fun. Or, yeah, I don't know. I'm going to leave it down to you lot. What do you reckon we should do? Leave it in the comments and uh, yeah, we'll go for there. We'll uh, turn this frown upside down and see what we can muster up. So as always, leave a like and a comment. Hope you enjoyed the video. It's been a while. I've been doing loads of other jobs in the meantime that I haven't filmed. But um, yeah, leave your thoughts on yeah, what you do with the car. As always from me, I'll see you on the next one. Ta-da!